Rise of Indian Nationalism Modern Indian nationalism arose to meet the challenge of foreign domination. It was a reaction to the oppressive and exploitative nature of the British rule and the clash of interests of the Indian people with those of the British. Several armed revolts took place after 1857. The Kuka Rebellion was one such revolt. It was a rebellion of the Sikhs under the leadership of Guru Ram Singh. It was a protest against the deliberate policy of the British to create a rift between the Hindus and the Muslims. The Kukas, followers of Ram Singh, tried to overthrow the British rule in Punjab. The revolt was mercilessly crushed. More than 50 Kuka rebels were tied to the mouth of cannons and blown up. In Bengal and Bihar, the indigo revolts against the British were also crushed. Similarly, the Santhal uprising in Bihar was also suppressed. The numerous uprisings during this period were expressions of the widespread, deep-rooted discontent against the British rule. These, however, did not pose any real threat to the British rule because they were regional and short-lived. What was needed was an organised All India movement under the leadership of nationalist-minded Indians who could mobilise and unite the people. Causes of the Rise of Nationalism Nationalism is a patriotic feeling of love and loyalty for one's own country. It is a spirit born out of a shared common history, culture, territory, economic and political goals. There were several factors responsible for the birth of nationalism in India. Factors promoting the growth of nationalism in India The causes responsible for the origin and growth of nationalism in India are Political unity For the first time, most of the regions in India were united politically and administratively under by the British rule. It introduced a uniform system of law and government. Development of communication and transport The introduction of railways, telegraph and postal services and the construction of roads and canals facilitated communication among the people. All these brought Indians nearer to each other and provided the facility to organise the national movement on an all-India basis. English language and Western education The English language played an important role in the growth of nationalism in the country. The English educated Indians who led the national movements, developed Indian nationalism and organised it. Western education facilitated the spread of the concepts of liberty, equality, freedom and nationalism and sowed the seeds of nationalism. The role of the press The Indian press, both English and vernacular, has also aroused the national consciousness. Social and religious movements of the 19th century The leaders of various organisations like the Brahmo Samaj, Ramkrishna Mission, Ari Samaj, Theosophical Society, etc. generated a feeling of regard for and pride in the motherland. Economic exploitation by the British A good deal of anti-British feeling was created by the economic policy pursued by the British government in India. The English systematically ruined the Indian trade and native industries. Therefore, economic exploitation by the British was one of the most important causes for the rise of Indian nationalism. Racial discrimination The revolt of 1857 created a kind of permanent bitterness and suspicion between the British and the Indians. The English feeling of racial superiority grew. India as a nation and Indians as individuals were subjected to insults, humiliation and contemptuous treatment. Administration of Lytton Lord Lytton arranged the Delhi Darbar at a time when the larger part of India was in the grip of famine. He passed the Vernacular Press Act, which curbed the liberty of the Indian press. His Arms Act was a means to prevent the Indians from keeping arms. All these measures created widespread discontent among the Indians. The Ilbert Bill Controversy The Ilbert Bill was presented in the Central Legislature during the Viceroyalty of Lord Ripon. 
the bill tried to remove racial inequality between Indian and European judges in courts. The bill empowered the Indian judges to try the Europeans accused of crime. This bill was opposed by the British residents in India. Ultimately, the bill was withdrawn. Thus, various factors contributed to the rise of nationalism and the formation of the Indian National Congress. Early political organizations The feeling of nationalism found expression in the political organizations that came into existence after the revolt of 1857. All these early organizations were local in character. In 1866, Dada Bhai Nauroji founded the East India Association in London to propagate the Indian problems in Britain. Surendranath Banerjee, a former civil servant, started the Indian Association in Bengal in 1879. Similar associations were formed in Pune, Madras and Bombay. The time was ripe for an all-India organization and the first attempt was made in 1833 by Surendranath Banerjee when the All India Nations Conference met in Calcutta. He was a brilliant writer and orator who influenced many young people through his speeches. He was dismissed from the Indian civil services for his independent thinking. The Indian National Congress The Indian National Congress, also known as the Congress and abbreviated as INC, is a major political party in India. It is the largest and oldest democratic political party in the world. Founded in 1885 by Alan Octavian Hume, Dadabhai Nauroji, Dinsha Vacha, Vomesh Chandra Bonerji, Surendranath Banerji, Manmohan Ghosh, Mahadev Govind Ranade, and William Wedderburn, the Indian National Congress became the leading organization of the Indian independence movement with over 15 million members and over 70 million participants in its struggle against British rule in India. After independence in 1947, it became the nation's dominant political party, led by the Nehru Gandhi family for the most part. The history of the Indian National Congress falls into two distinct eras. The pre-independence era, when the party was at the forefront of the struggle for independence and was instrumental in freeing India and the leading organization, and the post-independence era, when the party has enjoyed a prominent place in Indian politics. Ruling the country for 48 of the 60 years since independence in 1947, in the pre-independence era, the Congress was divided into two groups, moderates and activists. The moderates were more educated and wanted to win people's faith to lead the nation to independence without bloodshed. The activists, however, wanted to follow a revolutionary path and make it a militant organization. By 1907, the party was split into two halves, the Garam Dal, literary hot faction of Bal Gangadhar Tilak or extremists and the Naram Dal literary soft faction of Gopal Krishna Gokhale or moderates. The moderates were distinguished by their soft attitude towards the British. Under the influence of Bal Gangadhar Tilak, the Congress became the first integrated mass organization in the country, bringing together millions of people against the British. The Indian National Congress was the only political party to provide harmony to all the sections of the Indian society. The first session of the Congress was held in Bombay, now Mumbai, in December 1885. It was presided over by W.C. Banerjee and attended by 72 delegates. The main aims of the Congress were to promote friendly relations among nationalist workers in different parts of the country to develop and strengthen feelings of national unity throughout the country, to formulate popular demands and to place them before the government, to train and organize public opinion in the country. The first session of the Congress ended with the delegates affirming their loyalty to the British Crown and declaring that all they desired was greater involvement and participation of the Indians in the government. This soft, conciliatory attitude of the Congress 
would, in 44 years' time, be transformed into a strident, emphatic demand for Poorn Swaraj. The history of the Indian national movement, led by the Congress, can be divided broadly into three phases. They are Moderate Phase, 1885 to 1905, Radical Phase, 1905 to 1918, Gandhian Phase, 1918 to 1947, Partition of Bengal. Applying the divide and rule policy, Bengal was divided by the British on October 16, 1905, into Hindu and Muslim areas. By doing this, the British had hoped to increase tensions between the Hindus and the Muslims. Lord Curzon was the British Governor General at this time. The excerpts from Curzon's letter on 2nd February 1905 to St. John Broderick, Secretary of State for India, gave an idea of his aims in partitioning Bengal. The official reason given was that Bengal was too big to be efficiently administered. So, it was divided into East Bengal and West Bengal. The nationalist leaders understood the actual reason, which was to split a strong and united Bengal. Bengal had become the nerve centre of Indian nationalism and partition would weaken the spirit of nationalism. It was also to create a wedge between the Hindus and Muslims of Bengal, as East Bengal had a Muslim majority and West Bengal a Hindu majority. Moderates and Extremists By 1907, the moderate nationalists had exhausted their historical role. Their failures, too, were numerous. They lacked faith in the common people, did not work among them and consequently failed to acquire any roots among them. Even their propaganda did not reach them, nor did they organize any All India campaigns. And when during 1905-07, to such an All India campaign did come up in the form of the Swadeshi and Boycott movement, they were not its leaders. Their politics was based on the assumption that they would be able to persuade the rulers to introduce economic and political reforms. But their practical achievement in this field was meagre. Instead of respecting them for their moderation, the British treated them with contempt. The government of India, headed by Lord Minto as Viceroy and John Morley as the Secretary of State, offered a bait of fresh reforms in the legislative councils and, in the beginning of 1906, began discussing them with the moderate leadership of the Congress. The moderates agreed to cooperate with the government and discuss reforms, even while a vigorous popular movement, which the government was trying to suppress, was going on in the country. The result was a total split in the nationalist ranks. There was a great deal of public debate and disagreement among the moderates and extremists in the years 1905 to 1907, even when they were working together against the partition of Bengal. The extremists wanted to extend the movement from Bengal to all over the country. They also wanted to extend the boycott of foreign goods to eventually all kinds of association with the colonial rulers. The moderates were opposed to all these ideas. Matters came to surface at the Calcutta Congress in 1906 over the question of its presidentship. A split was avoided by choosing Dadabhai Nauroji, who was respected by all the nationalists as a great patriot. Four compromise resolutions on the Swadeshi, boycott, national education and self-government demands were passed. Throughout 1907, the two sides fought over different interpretations of the four resolutions. By the end of 1907, they were looking over each other as their main political The Swadeshi and Boycott movement, the division of Bengal, gave rise to two new methods of struggle, Swadeshi and Boycott. These movements were launched to end the partition. Swadeshi literally means of one's own country. It was aimed at making Indian goods popular so that Indian industries prosper and a patriotic spirit is developed. The method of boycott focused on asking people to boycott British goods 
so that India was no longer treated as a dumping ground and a market for British goods. The formal proclamation of the Swadeshi movement was made on the 7th August 1905 in a meeting held at Calcutta Town Hall. Even moderate leaders like Surindranath Banerjee toured the country urging the boycott of Manchester cloth and Liverpool salt. On September 1, the government announced that partition was to be effected on 16 October 1905. The following weeks saw protest meetings being held almost every day in Bengal. Some of these meetings, like the one in Barisal, drew crowds of 10 to 12,000. That the message of boycott went home is evident from the fact that the value of British cloth sold in some of the Mofusil districts fell by 5 to 15 times between September 1904 and September 1905. The day partition was to take effect, 16th October 1905, was declared a day of mourning throughout Bengal. People fasted and no fires were lit at the cooking hearth. In Calcutta, a strike was called. People took out processions and band after band walked barefoot, bathed in the Ganges in the morning, and then paraded the streets, singing Vande Matram, which almost spontaneously became the theme song of the movement. People tied rakhis on each other's hands as a symbol of unity of the two halves of Bengal. Later in the day, Anand Mohan Bose and Surindranath Banerjee addressed the two huge meetings, which drew crowds of 50,000 to 75,000 people. These were, perhaps, the largest mass meetings ever to be held under the nationalist banner so far. Within few hours of the meetings, a sum of rupees 50,000 was raised for the movement. Split in the Congress Serious differences were developing between the moderates and the extremists over the goals and methods. The moderates continued to believe in steady reforms in the existing system. The extremists wanted to extend the Swadeshi and boycott movement to the rest of the country and to all institutions, while the moderates wanted it to be confined only to Bengal and only to foreign goods. A split was temporarily averted in the Calcutta session of 1906 when the grand old man of Indian politics, Dada Bhai Naoroji, was chosen as the president. He openly declared Swaraj to be the goal of the Indian national movement. However, the differences were too wide and the Congress split in the stormy session at Surat in 1907. The two groups met separately until 1916. This weakened the national struggle to the delight of the British. Government Policy of Repression and Reform The government first followed a policy of suppression of the nationalist movement. It tried to crush the radicals by force. In May 1907, Lala Lajpat Rai and Ajit Singh were deported to Mandalay, Burma, without trial. Bipin Chandrapal was sentenced to six months' imprisonment. Tilak was sentenced to six years' rigorous imprisonment for writing some articles in the Kesari. Young men organized themselves into bands and started activities. When the government failed to suppress the Indian demands for Swaraj, it decided to follow a policy of kicks and kisses. It introduced some constitutional reforms by passing the Government of India Act. 1909, also called Morley Minto reforms. Its main provisions were the number of members of the Central Legislative Council was raised to 69, out of which 27 were to be elected. The Provincial Legislative Councils were also enlarged. In these councils also, the elected members were in minority. The Act introduced the system of separate electorates. Muslims were given separate representation. Some of the members were to be elected by the municipal committees, district boards, landlords, etc. An Indian was appointed as a member of the Viceroy's Executive Council. S.P. Sinha was the first Indian member of the council. The Morley Minto reforms 
failed to satisfy the aspirations of the Indians. The powers of the central legislature and those of the provincial legislative councils were very limited. The central legislative council could not even advise the governor-general on military and foreign affairs. The franchise was neither white nor uniform. It is thus clear that the act was in no way a step towards the grant of self-government to the Indians. Provision of separate electorate The Minto Morley reforms in 1909 provided for separate electorate for the Muslims. It was not done keeping the welfare of Muslims in mind, but to divide the two major communities, Hindus and Muslims, to weaken the national movement. The Minto Morley reforms gave representations to Muslims much in excess of their population. It was done in consideration of their loyalty to the British. This provision led to widespread demands from different communities for a separate electorate. The formation of the Muslim League In 1906, the Muslim League was formed. The lead in its formation was taken by Agha Khan and Nawab Salimullah of Dekka. They were encouraged by Viceroy Minto. The Muslim League declared that its aims were to promote loyalty to the government, to protect and advance the interests of Muslims, and to ensure that Muslims did not develop feelings of hostility towards other communities in India. However, in spite of the efforts of the British government, the Muslim masses were drawn into the nationalist movement. The reason was the contempt that the Muslim felt for the British government for waging war against the Sultan of Turkey, who was regarded as the Caliph of the Muslim world. Two prominent Muslim leaders, Maulana Muhammad Ali and Abul Kalam Azad, carried on nationalist propaganda among the people and brought them into the struggle for freedom. The Muslim League itself was influenced by the spread of anti-imperialist ideas. In 1913, it adopted the attainment of self-government as its aim. Revolutionary Movement for Indian Independence The revolutionary movement for Indian independence is often a less highlighted aspect of the Indian independence movement. Those who believed in armed revolution against the ruling British fall into this category. The revolutionary groups were concentrated in Maharashtra, Bengal, Urissa, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh and Punjab. More groups were scattered around India. The underlying philosophy of the revolutionary groups arose largely against the partition of Bengal, 1905, which cemented a pan-Indian patriotic feeling, increasing in intensity, culminating in the civil disobedience of Gandhi. The revolutionaries more often considered Gandhi a hero, despite their ways being poles apart. Nationalists and the First World War In June 1914, the First World War broke out between Great Britain, France, Russia, Italy and the USSR on one side, and Germany, Austria-Hungary and Turkey on the other. In India, the years of the war marked the maturing nationalism. In the beginning, the Indian nationalist leaders including Lok Manya Tilak, who had been released in June 1914, decided to support the war effort of the government. In the mistaken belief that Great Britain would repay India's loyalty with gratitude and enable India to take a long step forward on the road to self-government. They did not realize fully that the different powers were fighting the First World War precisely to safeguard their existing colonies. The Home Rule Movement When Great Britain was involved in the World War I, India's national movement assumed new dimensions. One of them was the Home Rule Movement. On April 28, 1916, the Home Rule League was set up with its headquarters at Pune. Tilak went on a worldwide tour of the country, appealing to everybody to unite under the banner of Home Rule League. Annie Besant, an Irish lady who was a member of the Theosophical Society of India, played a key role in this movement. The importance of the Home Rule movement lay in the fact that for the first time, the independence of India clearly became the objective 
of the Indian National Movement. The public at large, especially the youth, began to indulge in acts of extremism, bombing parliamentary meetings, blowing up railway lines and picketing shops. It was at this juncture that a new leader appeared on the political horizon. Lucknow Session of the Congress The 31st Session of the Congress, which was held at Lucknow in 1916, was historic. It was presided over by Ambika Charan Majumdar, a prominent lawyer who actively associated with the Congress since its birth. After a lapse of about 10 years, both the moderates and the extremists were united again, which was a good sign for the national movement. In his address, the president declared, if the United Congress was buried at Surat, it is reborn at Lucknow, in the garden of Wajid Ali Shah. After nearly 10 years of painful separation and wanderings through the wilderness of misunderstandings, the brothers had at first met brothers. In this session, the Congress and the Muslim League came closer to each other and they signed the historic Lucknow Pact. A joint reform scheme was sent to the Viceroy. They decided to make a united demand for self-government. They were to join their hands in asking the government that a majority of the members of the legislative councils be invested with wider powers than before. They would make a common demand that at least half the seats in the Viceroy's executive council be filled with Indians. Thus, this session of 1916 cemented the friendship between the Congress and the Muslim League and promoted goodwill between the Hindus and the Muslims. Resolution condemning the Arms Act and Press Act were passed, which had virtually reduced the people and the press to a condition of absolute helplessness.